right, guys, we are on our way to the family farm. We are spending the night. We're gonna turkey hunt in the morning. Um, we had the video from last year when we went out and topped the gutter shot at our first turkey. This year, we're gonna try to get them in a little closer um, and make something happen. So we're excited. We're meeting some good friends down there. They're already getting there right now, waiting for us. So we're gonna go out this evening and try to figure out where we're gonna put their blind on the opposite side of the farm. We already have our blind set up because I kind of just leave it there year round all the time. It's in not in great condition, but it'll be good enough for what we're doing. Um, so there, we're gonna set up bears on the opposite side of the farm and maybe do a couple of owl hoots. Uh, crow called, um, our buddy got, see if we hear some gobbling on that side. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. well, my first turkey. Here we go. On our logging road, going right through the property, we got fresh turkey tracks. I don't want to. <laughs> Why? I haven't gotten my nerve up there yet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, if y'all got the, um, I think if you get the Georgia Big Game, it's on there. Oh, look at this. Nice turkey tracks, nice ones. All right. <laughs> I told you that thing in. has a huge turkey track underwater. With all the tadpoles. With all the tadpoles. Oh my gosh. It's weird oh. their little tails like. Oh. <laughs> Set up the muddy blind right there. And I keep losing them. We got nice turkey tracks literally right here. Right out in front. That spot looks golden. And then tracks right there. Yeah. It's going coming from that way. I've heard it twice now. Oh! I heard that one. Yes, it's the camera probably won't pick that up. But... Dude, I heard that three times now.
Alright guys, we had a great hunt. We want to give you a quick recap of the hunt itself. Um, we dropped our friends off in the dark early in the morning on the opposite side of the property and they made their way to uh, their muddy blind which we set up the night before and um, we all had a great hunt. There were gobbles going crazy on both sides um, starting off the morning just red hot right off the roost and um, pretty quickly, I mean I hadn't started calling, you know, it, the it had barely started to get light. I would say like the tiniest little bit of light when mm -hmm. gobbles just started going crazy. I mean, how did that make you feel when all the gobbles were just everywhere? Oh, it was insane. I've never, I think when we went for my first season last year, it was maybe two, three times that we heard some gobbles. Um, but this was like, before we could even really start calling, we were hearing them from all sides. And my heart was like racing so fast. I could hear it in my headphones and so it's crazy it was absolutely crazy yeah i felt the same way our hearts were just pounding we were so excited because again i hadn't even called and right off the roost everywhere we were hearing him to our left straight out ahead mm -hmm. of us to our right and there were two or three like very close to our right mm -hmm. um and then there were more coming in from a little farther back in all directions like i don't know how many turkeys we were hearing total but literally completely surrounded just yeah just absolutely every angle surrounded by gobblers mm -hmm. and our friends on the opposite side said the same thing they had gobbles coming from in front right left back mm -hmm. everywhere too so same situation um and you know started doing some calling and again they were spawning like crazy and it got to a point where you could tell especially from the right and out front too there were some getting closer and coming mm -hmm. in and to the right it was getting louder and louder and louder and so you can hear in that video you know I'd call and then you can hear the gobbles getting louder to a certain point and then I was, and we started doing some scratching too we would you know take our feet and just scrape the bottom of the blind uh, where there were leaves and try to make that natural hen scratching sound mm -hmm. um, to entice them even more and I was doing very soft calling a lot of like clucks on the box call where I just tap the tap the thing and it does a nice little cluck sound and they've responded really well to that in the past and they'd started to and it got to a point where the gobbles on the right were deafening. We had um, headphones where you can, you know, turn the microphone up. Yeah, turn the speaker all the way up. And we could hear everything insanely loud. Um, and they got, I mean, right next to us. And at that point, it just sounded like deafening in the headphones. But, I mean, they were right next to us. And um, But then, at one point, we started hearing cutting from either hens or people we're not sure but like out in front of us on a neighboring property and then to the right mm -hmm. and then maybe even in another the direction left. the I left definitely heard from and the it left. was like hen calls mm -hmm. all at once where we were the only one at first and it was right at that moment that like we could tell very quickly the gobbles kept going but they started to almost disperse mm -hmm. so it seemed like it was almost as if they were really like all drawing into our blind and then the minute there were these different whether it was other callers or hens, it was like then they realized there's more action out there. It wasn't just us. We weren't the only hen there. So they went to find other places to go. So Right. It seemed like they were all come to us, and then we got some competition. So in that moment, I wasn't exactly sure how to play it because at this spot, typically, um, I've heard some hen cutting when I'm calling, but for the most part, it's me. And they've come in on a string. It's been awesome. There was a time where I was calling and there was no gobbling and one came in quiet and I got that one. And that was the most mature, biggest one I've ever gotten. But in this case, it was the first time where like all this hen cutting started mm -hmm. from every direction. I had to figure out, okay, I got to compete with them now. And so... Well, and right before they started, 
it that those like it was had I feel like maybe about three on which makes sense because last year I feel like we did see some packs like coming in together of four and things like that but those ones that were like two or three on the side on the right that were coming in it got to a point right before those hens started making their sounds that I literally thought I was good ready to just get my first turkey like I was I was ready to pop that gun up and just go for it so I thought for sure these were they were just going to show themselves any second they were that close right but, and I thought the same thing I I didn't say it because I didn't want to do that I know how things can turn around and happen so I wasn't going to say it but just in my head I couldn't help but think this might be over in like 30 minutes this morning which um that's happened before and I really thought it was going to happen in that moment but um so they got like deafening close like just super loud right next to us and then that's when all the cutting started in every and it could have been a mixture of other hunters and actual hens because I mean there's a ton of hens all yeah. in that area. A few of them sounded really like, I mean, if they were callers, they were some expert callers because a few of them sounded like like quality hen sounds. Yeah. Um, but there were a couple that was really hard to distinguish, okay, are those other hunters out um, in the adjoining property or um, just to, it was hard to distinguish which was which, but... Yeah, it was it was tough to tell, but regardless, they started to disperse because some of the gobbles that were like kind of close started sounding further away. Some of the other ones, you know, sounded like they're going more right or more left, yeah. and everything was just dispersing. That one on the left really like went quiet for a while. Mm -hmm. Like he just kind of went silent. Like I don't know if he knew what to do with himself. <laughs> yeah, we we had one on the left that was very responsive, but all of a sudden yeah. he became very quiet for like 30, 40 minutes, and then all of a sudden. He gobbled pretty loud, mm -hmm. and that was when a lot of the other cutting had died down, and I had kept going, but periodically just very quiet calling. Oh, and another point I wanted to make is when all this, when all the cutting started happening, I was in a situation I wasn't really familiar with, competing with these other hens, and so I just had to make a decision, and the decision that I made was to be the hard-to-get hen, which maybe that was a good decision, or it didn't work out, so maybe it wasn't. <laughs> But the bottom line is that's what that's what I've done in the past. I played hard to get. If they gobble, I don't, you know, go right back at them. I wait, I wait two, three, four, five minutes, and then I'll go. And if they're gobbling, I'm not responding. I'm waiting until it gets quiet for a little bit, and then I'm going, and I'm getting them coming in. But because there was so much cutting, I feel like I'm competing with them. So there's that instinct that, okay, I got to be louder. I got to, um, you know, go harder on this call. But... I decided, no, I'm going to go less, I'm going to go quieter, and that may have been the wrong decision. I don't know. To be fair, I do feel like, you know, thinking back on the situation, the, the hens we were hearing, or those other hen sounds we were hearing, they weren't necessarily going crazy either. They were just, they were, I know I didn't hear any last season, so it was definitely more than I've ever heard, and def more than what you've heard from what you've said, but they were making sounds but they weren't it didn't seem like they were like eager themselves either so I think I mean I give you credit for I think in that situation of what was going on I think you kind of blended in as the other hand sounds were too it wasn't like you stood out in a negative way or like un didn't seem un you know unappealing to them or anything like that so to give you credit I feel like you kind of matched what the other hens were doing too so but overall in the end there was a period where it got really dead for about maybe 45 to 50 minutes and this was at the very end um getting close to was it like 11 40 something mm -hmm. that what were no those? it was uh 11 probably like 11 20 ish because it was we were a cut time that we had given ourselves to kind of wrap things up and start heading back to the truck to like reconvene and figure out what our next plan was was 11 30 and it was dead quiet up until about 11 20 and I was mm -hmm. kind of just getting to that point where coming off of that adrenaline rush and I was just crashing and I just was kind of feeling like okay I'm, that was a ton of action that I heard and I'm going to walk out of here with not even seeing one. <laughs> yeah, and we, again, we had friends in um, the night before, and they stayed at the house uh, down there with us, and we just had a great time. But we were all so excited about the hunt the next day that we, I mean. I we, mean, you do what friends do. You stay up, you catch up, you yeah. 
don't but get even, sleep. But even when going. we, but even when we did go to bed, it was yeah. just hard, like for every for excited. anyone to sleep. Nobody slept well, just because we were so excited. Mm -hmm. We enjoyed, you know, being there all together so much that it was just like that anticipation, that excitement mm -hmm. made it hard to sleep. Um, and so, um, you know, we were a little bit tired. And then when the gobbles were coming, you know, they were adrenalized on the other side. We were. Like, we were adrenalized and thinking this is about to be over, you know, before it starts. This is going to be quick. And then that gobbling went on for a while. And then so when it got dead, we got really, really tired. And we still stuck it out, you know, those hours. And um, around 1120 or whatever it was, um, Tabitha ended up seeing a couple of... So I, out of our view of the blind, I we could both see straight forward and I could see far right. And she could see far left. So she could see far left and straight. I could see straight and far right. Mm -hmm. Um, and you wanted to say what happened with those two? Mm -hmm. So it was at a moment totally caught me off guard because in this lesson to all hunters, which I'm sure most of you already know, and lesson for myself for sure, do not think just because you're not hearing things that something isn't going to appear. Because I had just gotten to that point after, you know, I was like, I mean, we're going to wrap it up in 10 minutes. It's, I'm done. You know, I was just ready to check out, which that's, that was a lesson I learned for myself. But as I was not paying as much attention as I had been all morning, I mean, I was, I was ready to get that turkey. So I was scanning. And then as I let my guard down out of the corner of my eye, I see movement and I look up and there is, a, it was a decent size, um, Tom, who showed his head for about half a second and then popped it done, down, um, the, he's walking behind some fallen branches and brush. And so he popped his neck back down. And then I, so I, I got all excited. I freaked out for a second. I said, Tom, Tom, you know, I whispered as like as excited whisper as you could whisper or, you know, and yeah. to let Sam know that there was a Tom. And actually I didn't even believe her in that moment. And I don't know why, cause she doesn't really joke about That's that. That's not kind of a thing. joke I would pull in that moment at all. <laughs> but for some reason, it just because it had gotten so slow and just to mm -hmm. let you know how slow it had gotten. For about I like two hours. Yeah. And yeah. I texted my friend on the opposite side and I said, how's it going? He said, "It was they were firing off this morning, mm -hmm. but for the past however long, he said, it's it's pretty dead now. Yeah. Like, he literally said, it's pretty dead now, or it's gotten really dead, or whatever, however he put it. And mm -hmm. I was thinking to myself, well, it's kind of gotten like that here. It sounds like it's pretty equal on both sides how it's been this morning, from the hot action with gobbles mm -hmm. to, like, really slow now. And that is the moment. He had literally just said, it's dead. And I'd say five minutes later, Four or five minutes later, mm -hmm. she's saying, there's a, there's a turkey. And I think that's why in this moment this happened even more so. But I was like, no, there's not. <laughs> Babe, stop. Stop. Tell her to stop. And she's like, there's a... And then... And <laughs> then I see another Tom. And I mean, I am not one to... Like, I think turkeys are beautiful in their own way. Do I think every turkey is beautiful? I'll admit, I am not that person. Do feel like... I mean, they, they are good to eat. They are a good food source for our family. But I am not one to think every single Tom is beautiful. But this Tom was, I mean, handsome. He was, he was a good looking bird. And his head comes out and he is twice as big as the first one. And at that point, I mean, and we're talking about this now, but like it happened within like seconds, you know, it's like, it happened so fast. I mean, the way she described him, he was good, good enough looking to be the next, you know, stay at home grown. <laughs> yeah, he could have been their logo. Like he, been. he did. I mean, the brightest red. And the the prettiest, like, pale blue head I've ever seen on a turkey. Like, he just was, and I mean, his body, he wasn't even ruffled. And you could tell he was a big bird. Um, so, that was, it was exciting to see them, but I didn't even have the time to, like, get my gun into position. And then his head went down. And the spot they were in um, on that piece of property is there again there were branches that had fallen and then brush and then two trees so they walked out from behind one tree behind all that brush and branches and the first one ducks his head down after like a half a second the second one walks out right behind that one and had his head up for what i feel like i mean it was how far off would you say it may have only been 30 to 35 yards yeah but it was it definitely is a very it kind was, of thick, brushy yeah. area. So, in order to get him at that that far enough way, for me, being a new hunter and wanting to make sure that if I am shooting an animal, I want to make sure I'm doing a shot that is going to 
make it a quick harvest. Um, I don't want to just cause injury or anything like that. I want to be smart about my shots. So, um, he came out and walked for maybe three seconds and then put his head down and there's a ridge right behind. We walked up cause I, this last year, it was almost like a traumatic, like <laughs> replay of last year for me because on my first season, it was probably a good, maybe five feet behind that spot um, to the right of it. And so that was where I saw the flock that walked in together and the one that I took a shot on last year and I missed. And maybe that's, that's probably why I feel like for me, it is more of, I want to be very careful about the shots I make, because even though I didn't injure that bird, I still like that realization of I could have injured a bird and it could have gotten away and wouldn't have been a successful harvest and it would have been for nothing, you know, and I don't ever want to do that. But it being in the similar spot, we decided to walk over there and finally look at like, okay, where are these birds going? Because I kept telling him like, they just disappear. It's like they don't, you would think where that area is and the way it looks that they would just continue walking along that brush and branches behind it and pop out on the other side of the tree that's right there. But they just disappear. And I was trying to tell him like, these birds just keep, dis they disappear after they yeah. hit a certain point. Like, we found a ridge and yeah. they're going down and it's like a trail. So yeah. they're walking that trail. Like she said, there's a ridge and it's it looks like a little bit of a ditch kind of area where they can just disappear right into mm -hmm. it, in and out. And last year it was a, almost that same spot, maybe a little bit further back. Mm -hmm. And they were going, there were four of them going um, right to left. This time they're going left to right, those two. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and then, you know, maybe like 10 minutes after that, um, because then we texted, you know, we're not coming back to the truck yet, explain the situation. And maybe 10 to 12 minutes later, we heard a loud gobble and we couldn't even exactly tell where that one came from. It just bounced around the yeah. room so much, but we think it was probably one of those two. Maybe it could have been a different one. Um, but then shortly after that kind of wrapped up the hunt. Um, but it was a great hunt overall. Again, lots of action. I mean, just being out there with good friends mm -hmm. and hearing all those gobbles, um, really hearing all those gobbles makes it worth it alone right there just being in the woods together and with mm -hmm. good friends and hearing all those gobbles makes the experience worth it yeah for sure i think for me it definitely helped me kind of like retune my mind after that first season of taking a shot on a bird and missing it and feeling a little defeated walking out of there feeling like i was going to come away with a bird that my very first season out the gate which i know happens but not for everybody but it kind of gave me that, like, help me fine tune my mindset of just keep at it and learn a few lessons for myself. Keep focused. Don't think it's been a couple hours and it's too quiet. So there's nothing I can, I can relax. Um, so that, you know, and it also just, I think, helped me kind of figure out where I'm at as a hunter too with what shots do I feel comfortable with taking and what shots do I not and and walking away feeling like it's okay that I didn't take that shot because I didn't feel comfortable with it so still it was a very adrenaline rushing like it was a roller coaster emotion day I think it was definitely sure. all over the place absolutely but I hope you, I hope you guys enjoyed the footage all the gobbles hope you guys are getting after it yourself out there keep cutting keep getting after them um, and we'll see you guys on the next one